it is, ladies and gentlemen. Kiru's theme from Godzilla against Mecha Godzilla. What's up, everybody? And welcome to another episode of the G Show podcast. I am G1, and this is the Godzilla Block Party. I am, uh, you know, not for nothing. I talked a lot about this movie previously on the G Show on, on Facebook page. Not one of my favorite movies. I watched this movie again this morning. The movie in question is, of course, Godzilla X, Mecha Godzilla, or Godzilla against Mecha Godzilla. And I gotta be honest, I think I enjoyed it a lot more than I ever have this morning while watching the movie. But before yeah. We, yeah, but before yeah. we get into all of that, <laughs> let me introduce you to my very small yet powerful panel for this podcast. Joining us first, we've but got the ladies first. That's what I'm going to do. We've got oh, okay, so I read your mind. We've got G73 <laughs> opening his mouth. What's up, my brother? That's <laughs> going all right. How are you guys doing? Very well, thank you. Now we're going to jump to the lady, of course. We've got the first lady of the G Show podcast. We have Final Goji, a.k.a. Lindsay, joining us once again. What's up, my lady? Good. What's up, guys? I'm glad you can make it and joining us once again. My other brother from another mother. We've got Jay all hanging out with us. What's up, my brother? Uh, Good. Yeah, as you can see, he's in he's in festive spirits. The holidays are here. Let us all rejoice by talking about Godzilla against Mecha Godzilla. The um the reboot, if you will, is it a reboot? Could we consider this a reboot? I doubt it. No, it's not. It's just another movie with Mecha Godzilla in it. Now, if you joined us last week, we talked about uh Godzilla X. Mothra X, Mechagodzilla, Tokyo SOS. And we, uh, you know, said why we liked it, why we didn't. One of my biggest uh, reasons for liking that movie was the soundtrack. And as you can hear just now, uh, in our opening uh, theme there, that Kiru music, that that Kiru march is absolutely gorgeous. Second favorite Mechagodzilla march after the 1993 version. Um... But yeah, we're not here to talk about the music. We're here to talk about the movie. So let's get right into this. I'm gonna I'm gonna pass it off first because I want to hear from ladies first. Lindsay, the first time you saw Godzilla against Mecha Godzilla, what what went through your mind? Oh my goodness! When I first saw this movie, I like Final Wars. I fell in love because it was oh gosh, um, I think it was the fifth Godzilla movie I saw, and it was the first of. Uh, no, Godzilla Final Wars was first, and then, I guess, second of the Millennium series. Uh, basically, I was just blown away. I just, uh, like, to me, like, back then, I didn't really care about the plot, so I was just invested in the the kaiju action. And what I saw, it was just absolutely incredible. The shots in the film, Godzilla, I fell in love with the suit for Q Goji, especially, like, during the intro uh, sequence where he's going through the rain and he's crushing, like, the town. That was a great scene. And then also uh, Q's, uh, what what was it called? Like his his uh, zero? meltdown slash oh. out of control scene. The rampage. That scene, yeah, the rampage. That was great. I had so much fun with that. I remember actually jumping up and down. I'm like, yay, destruction. I like this. Uh, <laughs> you are definitely a lady after my own heart. I was the same way when I was young. That was the reason why I fell in love with Godzilla movies. Yes, giant monsters, but... Destruction on a grand scale. I was always big into it. And uh, Terror of Mechagodzilla did that really well. And watching this movie, that rampage scene, to me, was a, a beautiful throwback to it. I got something to say about that a little later. But let me get JR's take. When he first saw this movie, what did you feel? Well, I first seen it, I believe, on the Sci-Fi Channel when I was younger. And oh, that's a false. I enjoyed it. Um... I actually prefer it over Godzilla X Mothra X Mecha Godzilla X not great movie. Um, <laughs> I, I enjoy the shit out of it. I think it's far superior than its sequel. It's got better characters. It's got a better plot, though it's not the strongest plot point in the world. Um, and all around, it was just a good movie. There's not many stupid lines in it either. Which kind of upsets me, but then again, you know. <laughs> so yeah, 
I agree with you a lot on that. Uh, I, I agree with it being the better of the two movies. Um, I agree with the characters. I really do. I, I thought the characters were stronger. Um, even though they we're not there yet, but even though they were kind of like a, a clone of what we got in uh, Mega Gyrus, but that's two podcasts away from now. Uh, so let me jump to you, G73. You saw this movie the first time, man. Well, how did you feel? Oh, gosh. I remember... It was Easter, and my parents got me just a Godzilla Easter basket, and they had nice. action figures in it, fucking chocolates, and got a Godzilla against Mecha Godzilla. And I got my first Gigan figure that day. And then I went to this Easter party, and some kid tried to steal it, and I did not let him for the life of me. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, then I went home and watched that movie that night, and it's one of my favorites in the Godzilla franchise. Um, I loved. <laughs> now I was young, and I, you know, I watched the dubs um, every once in a while. I'll watch it, not dubbed, but um, I watch majority of the dub because usually I'm just at night when I'm watching them. I'm just lazy, don't want to read subtitles, so I'll just put the dub on, let my imagination go wild. Um, this movie, to me, depicts Godzilla in a new way that I just admire. I love this Godzilla being a little bit more animalistic, but yet still having that sinister feel to him. Um, it's like there's there's several shots in Godzilla against Mecha Godzilla when they show Godzilla walking through the city, like in the beginning of the film, and it's the red background. It's you know there's fire in the sky, and you see him, and he just looks angry and pissed off. I just love that visual. And then when he arrives the third time in the movie and he's attacking the town and he's about to destroy the hospital, before that there's another shot where he just looks massive and just vicious. And not only that, just now that I'm older, the one thing I'm conflicted is the idea of the bones of 54 because if I remember right in – the 54 movie, his bones just disintegrate. Right. Now, I mean, I may be wrong. I may be thinking about something else, maybe different with the King of the Monsters version. Um, nope, but it's there. Regardless of the... Huh? What's it's, that? It's there in both versions. The bones disappear. Okay. So that was kind of, as an adult, that kind of throws me off a little bit, but I'm like, you know what? Screw it. Um, <clears throat> Kiru himself. I don't like they named him Kiru. I thought that was kind of weird. Wait, wait, um, you know what? Hold that thought. We're going to get into that. We, we definitely okay, okay. Well, then, then I love the movie. It's one of my favorites. So let's let's get into another subject. All right. So <laughs> when the first time I heard about this movie, I was at G-Fest uh, 2002, if I'm not mistaken. 2001, two. I forget which one. I think it was two. And there were a couple of Toho execs there. And, 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 you know, right now, for the life of me, I'm sure there was a couple of um, powerful Toho producers there. They brought a trailer for this movie. And it was the first time North America was getting to see this. And we were lucky at G-Fest. And I'll tell you, man, it's it's one of those things about conventions in general. You got, you know, the Star Wars uh, convention that, that people go crazy for and they go to Europe. That G-Fest convention is really a... It's a pot of gold. Like, you can get so much out of it. I got this trailer out of it. So, I remember when I saw it for the first time, and they showed the, uh, you know, they showed G54 being disintegrated by the, the oxygen destroyer, and the bones fall out. The cr- like, everybody that watched that trailer that was in that room erupted. We erupted. It was insane, because it was like, holy shit, they're taking that, and they're turning that into a Mecha Godzilla. They showed a bit of the rampage. They showed, of course, they showed what Godzilla looks like. Um, but we didn't get the full plot. We just saw a nice, cool trailer that they cut for our benefit. And it was massive props on Toho's part. I was stu- super, super, super stoked for this movie. Then I saw the movie. And I really, I was disappointed. But like I said, this movie came out, what, uh, 2003? 2001? I mean, uh, 2002 or 2003, correct? 
2002. 2003 was Tokyo SLS. Yes, okay, perfect. So 2002. I've had, I've had uh, 14 years with this movie now. About, right? I, and I watch it more than once a year. I watched it again, like I said, this morning, and I really enjoyed it. And I remember, because I saw a post that I put up uh, not too long ago. You, you find, you know, a Facebook post that says uh, Memories. And it was about that from last year. And I was like, holy shit, I really enjoyed this movie a lot more now. And there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, when Godzilla comes out for the first time, when you see him for the first time in that typhoon, that first shot, amazing. And I'm not a fan of that. I'm not a fan of this particular Godzilla suit. I've said that in the last podcast. But this movie, it looked better than it did in Tokyo SOS for some reason. I don't know what it is. Yeah. But it does look better, right? It didn't look plastic, like I said in, in our previous podcast. It looked better, um, but that first shot... It, went, doesn't, it doesn't look rushed. Exactly. Very good point. Yeah, that's true. Very good point. When he comes out of the water behind that reporter, that doesn't <laughs> even look like the same suit. That looks like something from the Hesai series. I loved it. Yeah, it looks like 94's suit or Burning G's suit. Exactly, but with the spikes of that yeah. incarnation. It's a gorgeous shot. That, Like like Lindsay uh, said earlier, that whole intro with him walking through the city in the rain, stepping on buildings, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. It's, it's beautifully shot. The miniatures are beautiful to look at. Godzilla's imposing. Uh, then, of course, we get the whole rehash of Megagirus. And again, that's two podcasts away from now. But the whole, the same thing, you know, the young female cadet, her boss, you know, her, her, her superior gets killed. She feels like it's her fault. Shoots off at Godzilla. Then the money shot. Godzilla roaring in the rain and the lightning coming down around him. I'll tell you this. Before there was Facebook, before there was MySpace, there were Godzilla web pages. And on, I believe it's Tokyo Monsters. That was my profile pic back in the day <laughs> when I was just known as, well, yeah, G1. <laughs> and I fucking love that shot. That's a money shot. That's one of the greatest Godzilla shots I've ever seen. I love it so much. So, yeah, that's just a little bit of the uh, spiel I'm getting into. Um... Let's talk Mechagodzilla design now. G73, and I'm going to start, I'm going to throw it to you. Kiru's design, right. the, the, the design itself, let's put the name aside for now, but the design itself, what were your feelings on it? I, I like this design. To me, I feel, I feel like it's a mixture of the 70s Shawa Mechagodzilla and Mechagodzilla 2. Um, I think they wanted to incorporate all that in this design. Um, I do like the design a lot. Um, I I don't really think I have anything about the design that I dislike. I think it's a pretty in, I think it's a pretty good Mecha Godzilla. Yeah. So I think that's where I'll leave it at that. All right, Jr. What are your thoughts on the design of Mecha Godzilla? Well. Um, I actually enjoyed the design of this one a bit more than I did Tokyo SOS. Um, it, it's not as like darker toned in the uh, metal, um, but that's just me. Anyways, uh, yeah, I love the design. I love the one thing I really enjoy about this is this design are the uh, teeth because they're the actual 1954 Godzilla's teeth, which I find awesome. You know? I think it's really, really cool. And, um, I mean, overall, it's my favorite Mechagodzilla design. I, if I could go out and buy that SH Monster Arts uh, Kiyu Godzilla figure, I would. I just don't have $162. <laughs> now, hey, but I really do enjoy that design. I think it's, like, it's really good. It's different than both other two Mechagodzillas we've had. And it captures the millennium feel for what Godzilla had been thus far. And that's where I'll leave it. I like that. And I got to be honest with you. Now you're going to make me go back and watch the movie again today, being that, you know, I got nothing else to do um, because I never noticed the teeth thing. Now I got to go and look at that because that's kind of crazy if that's true. And I'll take your word for it. I'll believe you. But that's amazing. 
Lindsay, what were your thoughts Ooh. on this design of Mechagodzilla? Oh my goodness, absolutely in love with this uh, Mechagodzilla design. Like what Chase said, it combines, you know, the ferocity of the, the Showa Mechagodzilla, the sleek and shininess of the 93 Mechagodzilla. And then what JR said, it just, this Mechagodzilla captures the Millennium esque feel of the Godzilla series. And I know because uh, I love the suit so much. I begged my dad to buy me the the twelve inch Q uh, figure from Bandai. So I'm like, nice. please just buy this for me, and I will <laughs> never ask for anything again. And when that figure came, I just I loved it. I took it everywhere with me. So I just I love the Kira Goji suit or the 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 Kira suit. It's just it's fantastic. That's yeah, that's amazing. I I like the suit a lot myself. Uh, I. I, th- I still think the original show of Mechagodzilla is is my favorite, but eh, not by much. It, uh, yeah. My favorite Mechagodzilla movie is the Hesai movie. Uh, so I, it varies. I, I love each one of them for what they are. But Kiru, man, you know it's it is a a, a just a gorgeous design. That's what I, it's it's very sleek. Yet it, it, it retains this reptilian look. Where that doesn't look nothing like the original 54 Godzilla. Neither does this uh, Godzilla in the movie. But it works so well in the context of the movie. I'm still, I'm, I'm bugging off the, the, the teeth thing that JL mentioned. I really want to go look at that now. Like, what? Really? That's crazy. I like the suit. I like the design. I like the weapons on this thing. And that's one of the biggest things that, uh, one of the biggest reasons why I love Mecha Godzilla. What Mecha Godzilla is a weapon. Whether it's from space, whether it's made by G-Force, whether it's made by, you know, um, a, a couple of scientists that is not G-Force, it's, it, it's a weapon. And Kiru had such good offensive weapons. And, I mean, they had the absolute zero cannon. As kooky as that sound uh, sounds, black hole gun. <clears throat> uh, it's just... <laughs> It's just it's it's a cool concept. They they they're trying to freeze Godzilla before Shin Godzilla tried to freeze Godzilla or successfully did. If you didn't see it, spoilers. It's on the internet. You can watch it now. Um, but I I gotta say something, right? Uh, we're praising the movie, and I, you know I got like I said, I saw it again today, and I really enjoyed it a lot. Tiny nitpicks, less than what I originally felt about this movie. My biggest nitpick of the movie is when uh, Mega Godzilla and Godzilla meet for the first time. This was one of the biggest things I had a problem with the first time around, and it made me really not like the movie. And I kick myself now after watching it a bunch of times over and over. When Mega Godzilla shoots Godzilla for the first time with his missiles, that suit is just standing there. The, the Godzilla suit's just it's 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 not it's not a man in suit. It's just the prop. It's not, it doesn't move, it doesn't flinch, it doesn't blink, it just stands there and takes the missiles. Then Mechagodzilla hits it with the mazes, and then it reacts. That's cool. One can say, well, maybe Mechagodzilla's missiles, you know, does nothing to Godzilla. But then later on, when he comes back, when the when the tanks and the missile launches before Kiru gets there or shooting Godzilla, he's flinching. He's flinching, he's moving. That was something that took me right out of the movie the first time. I was so mad. Also, to the point that I wasn't a fan of that design of Godzilla. Uh, it's grown on me. But back then, I was just like, eh, okay. So I was like looking for any excuse not to like the movie. But that was my biggest gripe. It, it doesn't change anything. I'll tell you this, though. There's a continuity error that I caught this morning. And I wrote it down. So part of me as I quote what I wrote down. When Kimi Mizuni is the prime minister and they start talking about very beginning how the 54 Godzilla became a curse to Japan because all of these monsters came after that. They talk about Mothra. Now we know Mothra is in the sequel, right? And I quote what they say. Luckily, we destroyed... And this Mothra. They're talking about Mothra here. Luckily, we destroyed it with a massive heat ray gun. Wait, what? They didn't destroy anything because Mothra was alive and well. Now, unless the Mothra that came and visited, um, uh, you know, the old man from the original Mothra movie. I forget his name right now. It's uh, slipping my mind. Unless that's another Mothra, 
then that's a continuity error that they should have caught when they were making the sequel. I don't know. Maybe that's just me getting way too into it, but that's just something. I believe that they knew they were going two movies with this. What about you? Let's talk to you, Lindsay, because I saw your hand up. You were ready to go. Yeah, uh, because I I realized this like a few times after I watched the movie and I saw War of the Gargantuans and uh, the original Mothra. You know, it takes place in the same universe. They established that the original Mothra and War of the Gargantuans and other monster movies take place in this universe. So that's that's really interesting. I I I can't believe I did, I missed that because that makes sense. Like you know, like yeah, what did what you said? What you said? <laughs> that was a quote from the movie. That was a quote from the subtitles. Okay, I watched the subtitle version. That was a quote from the subtitles. If you guys don't believe me out there in G Show Land, if you have the movie, pop it on, put the subtitles on, and watch that. You know. Watch that scene with the Prime Minister and the Prime Minister, I think, of Defense, Akira Nakano, Nako, I forget his name. I can't say his name. My Japanese sucks. Uh, But in that (laughs) scene, when they talk about Mothra, and that's the first monster they talk about, she says, in subtitles, they destroyed it, destroyed it using heat lasers. So, uh, a heat ray gun, excuse me. So, yeah, that... Kind of like really, I, I we, th- that that's a little attention to detail that I wish they would have you know paid attention to later on, and maybe said this is another Mothra. Oh no, this ain't the Mothra you remember. This is a new one. You know they come about every fifteen twenty years. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> JL, what are your thoughts on on uh, anything like that? Anything I just said? You got any counters? Uh no, actually um, I have to agree with you on both. The first one with the suit just standing there. It's blatantly obvious that it's just a prop and not a man in a suit. Why they didn't have anything happen when he was getting shot with the missiles, when Godzilla was getting shot with the missiles, is just, it's beyond me. And I, it bugs me too. Every time I watch it, that's the one thing about that movie that really gets to me is it was just so obvious. You could have had someone in that damn suit to make it feel alive. To me, it felt lifeless. It's just standing there, like you said, not doing anything. It's just getting shot. Yeah. And yes, the uh, error with Mothra too. That's one I still face palm about because they did the sequel with Mothra. <laughs> I mean, come on here. You can't say you defeated Mothra and yet Mothra's there in the sequel with no explanation, really. Yeah. Now, uh, like Mothra died. I gave that some thought because when I first saw it, I, I, I had to rewind it because I was like, wait, did that say defeated or destroyed? See, defeated, I could have let it go. Godzilla gets defeated in this movie twice. They said destroyed. That means obliterated. That means it's dead. And I was just yeah, like, it, what's going it's on? Fucking dead here. <laughs> it's definitely dead. I mean, they put emphasis on that. And. Maybe they just didn't think they'd be able to have Mothra in the sequel and didn't put two and two together. But, I mean, it's in the dub and it's in the subtitles, so... Oh, okay. I didn't I mean, know that. Oh. No, it, it's it's in both of them. Yeah, I've never seen I've the dub. The, I'll tell you that right now. I've never, ever watched the dub of this. Yeah, it, they don't. say the same thing in the dub. Don't. Don't watch it dub. <laughs> Actually, and, no, dude, you've got to do, do it. You just, have to do it. Do, watch I'll, it once I'll, and never I'll do explain, it again. I'll explain when it's my turn. Well, all right. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump to you. I, I, I actually have to recant that last statement. I actually have seen the dub. I am lying my ass off. On Crackle, okay? On Crackle, when I didn't have my Godzilla movies here with me when I moved to Vegas, I would watch Godzilla movies at night on Crackle, and they had G2000, uh, Final Wars and against Mecha Godzilla, and oh. I would put Mecha <laughs> Godzilla <laughs> on at night after I was already obliterated by being drunk. And <laughs> that's right, G One was drinking everything. I'll do. I don't care. Um, and I watched. I, so I, I technically did listen to it. I was around while it was on. Whether I was conscious or not is another story. Uh, G seventy three though. <laughs> Go ahead, brother. I want to make a statement on the reason you need to think why they didn't put a man in the suit when the missiles fire at him. Um, well, their special effects require explosives and fireworks. So you got to think those suits aren't very protective against certain special effects and the amount of special effects they probably needed for the suit 
it would have probably damaged a person in the suit. Okay. So it was a liability thing. I don't know about that, though, because in the rest of that movie, every time he gets hit with missiles and there's explosions off of the suit, he's flinching. In any other Godzilla movie from... And I can't use Shin as an example because that was mocap, but and, and of course, uh, Legendary or G98. But any other man in suit, he gets hit. Those explosions are popping on on that suit's body. Those uh, well, squad if, if squids. You watch, if you watch any of the behind the scenes of the Godzilla making, um, here's an example. One time when they were making a Heisei movie, um, <laughs> one, of, one of them guys in the suits got electrocuted when he was in the water. When he was in the water. Yeah, he, to the shore. Yeah. Um, so there are certain special effects that they, could pro- they probably could have used to not make it much of a liability. I'm, I'm not sure if that's the reason, but that's what I'm thinking is the reason why they didn't have a man in the suit was because it may have been a liability at this point. Now, that's a good thing. You know, that's a good point. I'm a counter it, but it, it, trust me, and it's all, in, you know, don't take this the wrong way. Uh, later on in that movie, when the military is attacking Godzilla, when he lands on Tokyo, before Kiru comes, and they're shooting at him, there is a sequence uh I believe it's right before um, the hospital when he's walking down the block, which is a great scene that you brought up G73 earlier today. I wanted to touch on that. I was like, wow, that's such a good shot. Um, He gets hit with the missiles on his side and the suit catches fire. That's in the movie. And I was like, oh, man, that's dope. And I was like, yeah, you know, and that's like a little homage. Ba- I don't, of course, it's not intentional. I don't know if it is or not, but that's a little homage to when Godzilla's spines was on fire and Mecha Godzilla, the Showa ones. Oh God, I just love that. Yeah, you know. And then in God- Mothra vs. Godzilla too, when uh, Hayao Nakajima, when the when in the uh, when the head caught on fire, when they're firing the missiles from the the ocean, his head caught on fire. Yep. So I'm like, damn, like the, these suit these suit actors, they take a beating take in a- these movies, and I just admire them so much. Massive props. And if exactly. you if you see one of the behind the scenes. Of that, I, I think during that scene, the actor fainted from the heat. I believe, yeah, I think uh, Nakajima did faint from it, but like he was fine afterwards. Yeah, he, yeah. yeah he's fine. He was that fine. That dude took some uh, beatings too in the Heisei as well. Oh. He almost died in Godzilla vs. Destroya because of uh, the, the smoke coming out of the suit. It was carbon monoxide. He almost died. Didn't he also <laughs> catch a concussion in, in uh, King Ghidorah when his? When yes, he when he hit fell. the floor. Yes, yeah. yes. Still one of my favorite Godzilla moments, but we're going to get to that. When we get to that, that's later on. <laughs> um, is, I want to I want to mention, um, I was actually watching it dubbed last night. Right. And I noticed, uh, and it's funny because it's funny you bring that up because I never really, it never really hit me what they say about Mothra and Gaira and the Ultraman fucking octopus thing. Um I was very, <laughs> I was kind of shocked. I was like, well, wait a minute. You said destroyed, but Mothra is not destroyed in your sequel. So, and another thing is, is like, you're saying, you know, they're kind of being like, this is supposed to be Mothra, you know, and it's supposed to have the correlation with the 64 uh, movie. Exactly. Um, but it's, it's interesting because that's clearly a different Mothra because Mothra died. <laughs> and they're trying to pass it off as like the same one. And it's just, it's like, what is Toho doing? <laughs> well, we're going to chalk, we'll chalk that up to continuity era. If it's in the manga where they explain the different Mothra, fine, that's cool, so be it. But yeah, I, you know, I'm glad y'all seen that too. I, I I was just bugging this morning because I've never ever noticed it before. I was just you know it's just a casual thing. Again, I watched the subtitle once. So, all right, yeah, they're talking about moth or whatever. I'll go. I'll look at my phone or I'll look at the ceiling or I'll just watch Kimi Mizuni talk because you know she's pretty. Or I'll just watch the action and not pay attention to the uh, the subtitles. Today I paid attention. I saw that and I said, wait a minute. We just podcast last week about this some bitch. What the fuck? So yeah, <laughs> that's the only reason why I brought it up today. Um, but uh, moving along off of that, that so yeah, those pretty much that th- those two things right there. Aside from the fact, uh, the the biggest complaint I have is the 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 prop suit that it really bothers me. Godzilla in every other movie, whenever he gets hit with whatever, 
he reacts. And and this movie, there was no reaction. So in that particular scene, so I was a little, you know, mad at that. It, it's yeah. it's also, I mean, it looks a little off to me too in that scene. He doesn't quite look like right either. It, it just looks off. It looks like it's just like half of a suit, like the top half from the yeah, hips up. That's all it looks so like. It's weird. Off feeling to me. I, I totally agree. That and, and like I said, the little snub there and the 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 the, the similarities between Megaguirus in this movie. And that's the same director. <laughs> my, my directing. issue my issue with the dub was they made um the scientist's daughter sound like a boy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know, yeah. It, it, it's hard, it's hard in there, you know, I, look there's many it is, a, but I laugh every time. Baseball stars. Oh, I don't know about that. Oh, okay, I get it now. All right, yeah, that's what they she's saying. Take their kids to work. You know what though? A lot of a lot of Japan, a lot of dubs. They do that. I mean, Gohan is is a girl in Dragon Ball. I just, if, if nobody, I mean, if nobody's ever seen, you know, Dragon Ball Z. Uh, when Gohan's a, a boy, that that is a girl voicing him. And in case you you watch the dub versions. That is a girl dubbing Goku and Gohan and all that. And I'm okay with that. But anyhow, that's Dragon Ball. This is Godzilla. Different thing. Um, I want to I wanna get into something a little political here. Because uh, we all have our varying opinions on Shin Godzilla. Um, and I'm not talking about the monster. And I'm not. This is not. This is not me. Here we go. No, 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 no. There was something brought up in this movie that I paused it. I was like, wait a minute. I was like, this would make for a great movie. And this is where I believe Shin Godzilla, they they went. They used one of these um, political topics. Granted, it wasn't on on this type of scale, considering the movie we're watching. Oh, we're talking about today. Um, But okay, so let me, because I wrote this down too. So when when it was agreed that they were going to make Kiru, when when they were like, okay, the, the bill is passed, we're making a Mecha Godzilla. The reporters were flooding Kimi Mizuno. They were flooding the prime minister and they were asking questions. Two questions popped out. Two que- And I had to pause it so I could quote and write it down the way I saw it on the screen. One was, who's going to pay for it? Solid question. Solid question. This is taxpayers' money. Okay? Who's going to pay for it? Okay? That was one. Will it be used against other countries? Now, that was a very good question. I love that question. When I read that, when I like watched that and read that question, I thought of Shin Godzilla. And again, this is not me knocking it. I thought of Shin Godzilla because it was a very politically driven story. And I'm like, man, this is one of those questions that you can turn this question into a whole fucking movie. Very good question, solid question. And the other one was, is it an attempt? And I, this is a quote from the movie: Is it an attempt to rearm Japan with weapons of mass destruction? Holy fuck, wow, cock-a-doodle-doo. I love these questions. I sat there and that was the first time again that I'm, this is again one of the reasons why I really enjoyed this. And where the sequel never capitalized, because there's more later on I'm going to get to. But I was like, wow, these questions right here are some solid, solid questions. And in line of Shin Godzilla, the political views, you could take either one of those last two questions and create a whole movie around it and, 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 and go from there. So, um, am I just spewing nonsense, or does this sound legit, JR? Yeah, it does. It does what? Yeah, it sounds legit. All right, thank you. All right, I appreciate, I appreciate, appreciate your directing to the point. G73. Yeah, it's completely legit. And those are the one of the things that I always, when I watch it even dubbed, those are one of the things that hit me, like, you know... Okay, this is actually Japanese culture in this sense of them actually indulging on their politics. And I like that. I like that Toho. Uh, one thing I like about Toho is I always like that they're not afraid to necessarily take shots at their political agendas and their questions. Like, are we going to arm. Japan with nuclear weapons or are we going to make this monster weapon or like in um, uh, Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah when they mention Japan becomes the biggest empire and the greatest nation after 
2000 and something. I always, I like that in a sense, because I like that they're not afraid to do that. And when they mention things like who's going to pay for it, you know, is this an attempt to make Japan uh, gain weapons of mass destruction? I like that idea. I like they're not afraid to do that because that can open a lot of controversy and a lot of um, political backlash. And I like that Toho's not afraid to do that. And I love it. I love it. Sweet. Lindsay, what about you? I actually, I am glad you brought that up because I was actually thinking about that scene. And when you mentioned Shin Godzilla, I'm like, oh, he's probably going to mention, you know, that scene. But the, like to me, this is where this movie completely uh, succeeds over its sequel. It just, it, it does what Shin Godzilla does. It brings up the political aspect of, you know, criticizing the government, you know, bringing in the citizens, taxpayers, like stuff like that. It just, it makes it feel more real to me, something we can relate to and, uh, I just thought it was it was a great point. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, for me it was like a moment of of clarity because you're sitting here and you're watching the Godzilla movie and you're like, oh, they could, because you know there was never those questions raised in Hesai Mecha Godzilla. No, we just built this fucking thing and let's go crazy. No, but there it was adds a, a point of humanity. Exactly, good point. Yes, uh, and, and I thought it was well. Of course, she shot that shit down right afterwards. If you guys watched the movie, and I'm sure you did, if you listened to this podcast, she shoots him <laughs> down right after. She goes, no. Of course not. And if anybody has any questions about it, I will talk to the leaders directly. Perfect. Love you. Thank you. So, yeah, all right. I just wanted to bring that up as one of those things, man. When I saw that, I was like, man, that's exactly what they did with Shin Godzilla. They took a very politically charged question and turned it into a movie. And there were two questions in like 20 seconds that you're like, oh, shit, you could totally make this. So, yeah. Okay, cool. We're on the same page. Like it. Um... Next up, though, that being said, she's not the prime minister for long. While making Mechagodzilla, a, a, a huge amount of time goes by. Her turn's up. So now you have um, the next prime minister come in. Her, uh, I guess, prime minister of defense, Akira, you know who, Nakao, uh, again, bad Japanese, sorry. Um, and now we're at the press conference. Kiru is created, it's made, we're at the press conference. Each scientist in their respected fields are talking about Kiru and what they brought to the table. So the main scientist, I forget his name, but the guy with the daughter who wants to get with Akane, uh, he, he's talking about the <laughs> DNA. Why am I lying? I'm, I'm not lying, right? That's what happened. No, right? that thing, I was going to say, <laughs> but I'll get into it at the last part. All right. Go so, on. You know, he's talking about the, the DNA um, computers or whatever. <laughs> The, the microwave woman talking about the microwaves and so on and so forth. And then we get the final, the final scientist. The, the guy is talking about absolute zero. Now, this is where it's like, wait a minute, a change of cabinet, a change of heart. It's scary because of things that are happening in real life today. You don't know what's going to happen. The dude who was the... Um, the absolute zero canon specialist, because they even, I forgot uh, exactly his title uh, when they first show him in the beginning, but it's about sub zero, you know, sub zero, sub free, uh, sub zero temperatures, excuse me. He's talking about absolute zero. They give the demonstration and then he gets rowdy. Watch that scene. He goes from calm and composed to we got the best weapon on the fucking planet, and if you fuck with us, you're right. all dead. We have the ultimate weapon. Yeah. So yeah, that, that those yeah exactly the exact lines because again I wrote it down I quoted the shit. The extent of Kiru's power is devoted to the gun. Uh, <clears throat> at last we have the ultimate weapon. But you watch that scene. I watch it like I said subtitled. He is mad. He is like I. We did it. Nobody else in the gift flip. That's what I got from this scene. If you <laughs> fuck with us, you're done. So it's it's a full contrast to, to what, you know, the previous prime minister was telling the reporters and the, with the questions that they had. Oh, are we, you know, a new superpower now? We get the super weapon. And she's like, no, 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 no. And then this prime minister doesn't even come to the defense. He's just like, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> we do. <laughs> cough, cough. Yeah, so so uh, it, it, it's it's like, again, it's one of those things I, I watched and I took from this movie like, fuck, this is actually a lot smarter 
than than you know that I'm seeing it now than I did when I watched it the first time. It's like totally fucking my head up. Is this dude basically threatening the rest of the world, Lindsay? Yes, I was about to say. Uh, it's, it like this is why I love this movie so much. It brings this guy, this one guy. You know, I think he's you know completely bonkers, but you know. But, like, you know, what you said with the first prime minister, she says, you know, no, 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 this isn't going to be used against other countries. It's just going to be used as a defense against Godzilla. And basically this guy's like, oh, screw it. You know what? We have this weapon, guys. If we're, if Japan's threatened, we can just go nuts on every country on the planet. And, like, that's what I love about it. It's the danger of these people in control of Q. Like, Q can destroy anything. Yeah. And, you know, if... Q falls into the wrong hands, that, that that could be a result. And I wish maybe the sequel did that in a way. You know, someone took control of Q and, you know, there's monsters everywhere. And, you know, Mothra has to come in and help and, you know, stop Q and then, you know, and then throw Godzilla in there. That would have been better, to be honest. Agreed. J.O., what do you think? Is this guy threatening the world? No, I think he's just an asshole, honestly. Okay. <laughs> maybe, maybe deep down he feels a, a hatred for the rest of the world, and he's plotted his whole life to make the ultimate weapon, and now that he has, he's cocky in his own way. Oh. No, I, I, I truly honestly believe he might just be an asshole, like over cocky right now, that created the ultimate weapon. If they really wanted to, yes, but the chances of that happening are slim to none. So that's what I'll say about it. All right. So I got you. So, so basically he was just, you know, a part of my French saying whose thing is bigger here and then does the running man. <laughs> it maybe ends with a dab, but I can't stand that. G73, what about you? Oh, I think you know, as every culture, there are the people that have hatred towards other uh, countries. And I think he may have a specific hatred towards, I mean, there's no doubt Japan still has a mourning for what happened in 1954 or, you know, or the atomic bomb. Um, so in that sense, I think in the case where he's bringing that is, you know, maybe in a, I look at it in a few ways. I think maybe he may have a little bit of, um, uh, ang- anger towards, um, and I'm not going to say America and specifically, but I feel like when we're watching a Godzilla movie, if there is any anger it for a country uh, to towards a country, it's you know assuming it's the United States. But I'm not going to say that. Um, I think it also indulges on the fact of the deeper message of Kier, uh, of, of Mechagodzilla three. Um, I don't like saying Kiru. But I'm going to say Mechagodzilla 3 now. That's fine. Um, you know, the message of, of Mechagodzilla 3 is he, you know, he still is essentially alive in this robot. He still has a mind of his own. And he didn't want to be revived or remade, recreated. And, you know, them saying and or hinting, you know, using Mechagodzilla 3 as a weapon towards other countries you know, in a deeper message, you know, Mechagodzilla 3 may not necessarily wish that in a sense. And I always picked off of that as the kind of dip, a cool, darker, in-depth, deep t- message. And, um, but as another thing, I think in a sense, they just also mention it as it's just an ultimate weapon to fight Godzilla. Um, I, I don't think he's necessarily threat, threatening other countries, but I can see, in a sense, he does have anger towards countries in that point. But um, I'm not too um, I'm not too sure on him threatening other countries. Now, I would have loved something in the sequel of them exploiting that, where they take Mechagodzilla and he's fighting another country, or they're using him in, like, let's say Russia, and he's just he's fighting Russia or something like that and then you know the 
<laughs> it would kind of, in a sense, though, it would kind of change Godzilla in a sense because at this point, if Mechagodzilla three is a bad guy in the sequel, then Godzilla would come back almost to a hero root. I would feel at this point, and not that I would be against that, but it would kind of make this the first movie very awkward. Um. But but I would have loved something like that. Godzilla coming and they're like, well, you got to, you know, it'd be almost like Final Wars. You got to realize we have Godzilla and you don't know about this thing. And, you know, Godzilla comes and wrecks Mechagodzilla 3 and then Mothra tries to stop Mechagodzilla. That would be cool because I wanted to see in the sequel Mechagodzilla and Mothra scrap each other at least at one point. But, you know, we don't get to see that. But I always would love I always would love to see that. You know, I would love a Mecha Godzilla and Mothra battle. I think that'd be very interesting to see. Um But on a side note, Mecha Godzilla's arm blades. I love the knives in his wrist. <laughs> I would love to see Mecha Godzilla stab Mothra Jeez. like he does Godzilla. I would have loved that. Just trying but, to kill that, everything. <laughs> that's my comments on that. <laughs> well, well, speaking of uh, Mechagodzilla being a bad guy, that brings me to my next point that I had written down because, you know, possibly one of well, my one of my favorite of all time sequences in a Godzilla movie, I touched upon it earlier, is Mechagodzilla's Rampage. There's something oh, poetic. There's something poetic about this scene. Um, Godzilla roars and it triggers Mechagodzilla. It triggers the DNA. It triggers the essence of 54. And all of a sudden, Kiru, boom, snaps. And uses every bit of offensive weaponry it has to destroy the city. And I absolutely love this scene. I am, you know... One of the greatest Godzilla scenes, absolutely. in my opinion. Absolutely. And, I, you know, it, it, it hurts because I love how they did it, the execution and. I just wish it was a little bit more, it's, but that's not a knock to the scene. I just, I wish there was an extended cut where we can get more Rampage because I'm a sucker and a glutton for all Let of that shit. battery last a little bit longer. Not even that, not <laughs> even that. Just show us more because it happens early in the day and then the, you know, they don't show everything that's happening in the in-between. Show me what happens yeah, in the in-between. Point. Just some extra shit. Anyhow, what I'm trying to say is it, it's... It's it's awesome. It's it literally is. It's it's the original Godzilla's final moment in the sun, and the very last shot of that is the poetic nature that I was talking about. To that, it, Kiru, his power dies down. He walks through that building. His head tilts down. The wind blows the dust off his face, and the sun is going down. It is such a tremendous shot. It is such. A beautiful shot. It's just like, there it is. Godzilla's last... You talk about Ghost Godzilla. That was Ghost Godzilla incarnate right there. He was finished. His rampage was done. We got one last one. And, you know, out of all the Godzilla movies, that scene is in my top five, possibly top three of all time. In a movie that, you know, I really just throw by the wayside. But it's such a gorgeously, it's a gorgeous shot, gorgeously shot. Uh, and if you think about it in the context that I just threw out there, uh, the 54's Godzilla last moment, I think it's just beautiful. Lindsay, what about you? Oh, I absolutely agree. That whole sequence was just beautifully shot. It, it was just fantastic. And I, I'm sorry, I have to break Shin Godzilla into this again. I'm so yeah, sorry. Absolutely. But. <laughs> But I realized when I watched it, like, for the third or fourth time, and I was thinking of this movie, it's kind of the same thing when Kiryu, like, he unleashes all of his weapons, and then he powers down, and, like, Shin Godzilla does the same thing. He, like, shows all of his weapons, and he powers down. It's just a minor point, but I kind of like that little little nod to that. I don't know if it was intentional, but I just... I don't know. I I just thought of that scene when I saw Shin Godzilla. I like, like that. I like that a lot. I can be honest with you. I kind of dig that. Again, I've got no problem... Yeah. I've got no problem with the destruction in, in Shin Godzilla. I just got a problem with a <laughs> fucking frill shark doing the destruction. Anyhow, j what about you? Okay, so, yeah, I love the fact that Kiyu goes absolutely 
crazy and starts destroying shit. And I agree, it should have been longer, especially when they show a lot of the damage after he's done doing that. I feel like we could have seen a lot more of that. Um, it it's easily one of the best scenes in the Godzilla franchise, honestly, because it is. In a way, the 1954, his soul's returned to his body. He's rebuilt, and he's going to use all the weapons that man just gave him Thank to you. fuck up man. <laughs> he's, you created him, so now he's going to fuck your shit up. Wait, 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 wait. To quote, to quote one of my favorite movies of all time, Die Hard 2, I don't believe it. How can the same shit happen to the same guy twice? but yeah and on that note when he's powering down with the sun and the dust blowing off his face i think of it and i say it almost every time it reminds me of a clint eastwood moment oh wow in a way because clint eastwood is just that badass and it just it totally reminds me of clint eastwood and it's because the sun setting the dust is flying off his face and he's got that look you know, Kiyu has that look, and Clint Eastwood has that kind of menacing look. To me, it's like, dude, he just Clint Eastwood the fuck out of Tokyo. He like, totally fucked shit up, and I love it. I, I love that analogy, Ben. Listen, if you're ever going to make a giant monster movie, and instead of giant monsters, have just regular dudes, Clint Eastwood for Kiru, hands down. Hands down. G73, <laughs> what about you, brother? No, that's one of my most favorite scenes. Um, again, the message behind it, to me, was just very stunning. Uh, the fact that um, when Godzilla roared, it triggered Mechagodzilla 3 to remember, you know, shit. You know, I'm still this monster, and you recreated me, and I still have... a. a a goal that I still ne- never completed, and it re- it revives that moment for him, and he goes on his rampage and continues what he was meant to do, and it's just the message of that you know we shouldn't have recreated Mechagodzilla, and which is touched uh, upon in Tokyo SOS, and exactly, yeah. and I and I and I was about to say that, and I'm that's sorry. what I love that this what the sequel brought in. I love that they indulge on that message. And that's the one of the things, you know, Mechagodzilla, I, I love, I, I just love the deep message they brought into this series. I love that Mechagodzilla 3, it's, it's conflicted. I like that. And when I mean conflicted, not in the movie, essentially, I mean in the plot. Mechagodzilla is conflicted with himself. And I think that, and the deeper message, like, that makes Japan, you know, that makes Japan in a worse spot. And I enjoy that. I love, I just love that message. And that scene, when he goes on a rampage, it's just so beautifully choreographed. And I, I just love that idea. And I, I kind of, you know, because there wasn't a part two to the rampage, I would have wished the rampage scene was a little bit longer, like you said, but I I liked it for what it was. I totally and get you. It's it's just one of my favorite Godzilla scenes ever. Totally agree. I have again I, no real problem with that sequence. I fucking love it, and I think it's one of the best in Godzilla history. Uh, again, I if it was just a little bit longer, I would have been cool with it. But I loved it. I it's. It's damn near flawless. It really is. Um, moving on, though. Let's get to the... I don't want to get into the characters too much because, like I said before, it's kind of like a rehash of Mega Garish. You have your solid uh, female lead who you, you have somebody hates her because she made a mistake in her early career and now she's trying to atone and she's the strong, silent type. She, You know, uh, um, Akane, the, the, the actress playing her, she knocks it out the park. I have no problem with the characters. The scientist, I really enjoyed his character, gotta be honest. Um, he was not a goofball. Um, he loves his daughter. He has a very tragic story behind him, and he always puts on a good face. I love characters like that, and they don't really get into it. They don't need to. It's, again, a Godzilla movie. But what they give us in this, 
You know, he's one of my favorite characters in Godzilla lore just because of the shit you know he's been through and how he has to put on or has put on, you know, a solid face. Does, does that, you know, make sense to any of you guys? Lindsay? Yeah, I was about to say, I really uh, enjoyed his character, but to me, I feel like the scene, like that one scene where Akane is with his daughter and they're talking about, you know, how she lost her mother and she believes that her mother is living inside the plant she always carries around. Yes. I always, that scene to me, it it always hits me because it gives me like a biolante as vibe. Yes. But at the same time, it gives me, you know, like this, and then at, at the same time, you know, Akane is like consoling her and telling her about life and you know, it's okay for people to pass on. They're they're always going to be with you. But I just found that really touching to me. I liked how she connected with his daughter in a way. But his character, yeah, I can understand. He's kind of like sort of not like over like a goofball, but he's like that kind of character. You know, he really likes this girl and, you know, he, he, he doesn't know what to do and he wants to go like hang out with her. But you know, I don't know. It's just, it's cute. It's, it's flattering to me. So, he, he reminds you know. me of, he reminds me of a, a Peter Parker without the powers. He got all the brains <laughs> in the world, right? Yeah. He's goofy, yeah. but he's still somebody you can rally behind. JL, what do you think? I think Akane is my senpai. <laughs> I, I used to have the biggest crush on her. Oh, God. I still kind of do a little bit, but um, <laughs> goofball scientist, dude, he's the shit. He's like, in, in a way, he's a little pervy because he's going for the younger girl. True. And she kind of <laughs> seems like she's not that interested, but later she might be a little interested. But he's like, he's almost trying a little too hard sometimes, <laughs> you know, but no, I enjoyed both of the characters. Like I said, Akane is my senpai. The only problem I have with her is, um, it was the scene where she screams Hayama and Ki, you give me power. I think it was just dumb lines given to her, but yeah. Other than that, I mean, I I like her more than the scientist dude, but the scientist dude still is the shit. Gotcha, gotcha. I totally agree with those lines too. I cringed. Uh, G seventy three. What about you? Uh, I love the character. He's just he's just very awkward. He is a very awkward character. Um, you feel awkward during these scenes he's sharing with his daughter and the girl he likes. Um, but yeah, the the one scene, you know, with his daughter, when she mentions, you know, why did they have to bring Godzilla back? Why couldn't they bring mom back instead? That hits home for me on personal levels, as we in this panel know. Um, so that part always hits me with the girl, because I understand her feelings. Um, but I do like when... Towards the end of the movie, she's like, you know what, Mom? I like her. And she's talking to the plant. I like that. I I, I like that. But that's where the sequel failed because you don't see the female cast at all in the sequel except once. And that was a bummer because I didn't like the male lead in the sequel. I thought he was unnecessary. Um, nothing against his character, but just, just there was no no point. I mean, you started something here, and then you recreated the first movie with the sequel, but just with a man, a man character as the role. And I'm like, that's that's like it's like rehashing and rescrapping and rebooting what they were doing in the first. And I didn't like that. I feel like they should have just had the the female lead again as the main pilot and just continue that story, but still implement the Mothra story would have been interesting. I agree. I, I think that they could have definitely benefited from the sequel. Could have benefited from the um, having the scientists still there. And as we touched upon earlier, maybe that, that one scientist that I think was trying to, you know, rule the world, uh, you know, <laughs> be not dastardly, but have different views in the sequel. It would have brought a lot more of the humanized like this movie was really good again like i said i really didn't like this movie for let's say the first five six years i've watched it then it started growing on me whereas today i could sit here and i could honestly tell you damn that's a really good movie because i got so without much out of it now. without falling asleep exactly i got so much out of it it was just like this is good um the story's good the character the reasoning everything is good and then the sequel is like Let's throw Mothra in it. 
you get a lot more monster action in, in the sequel, absolutely, but it kind of just feels dull. Um, but let's speak of, speaking of monster action, let's talk about that final battle, the final, the finale of this movie. I'm watching this movie, and I'm like, holy shit, now again, uh, it's hard for me because, you know, I... I I, I don't know. You you can tell the difference between old school uh, style of, of movie making, or just the cameras and the technology and the way things have evolved. Uh, I'm watching this movie and I feel like I'm watching an episode of Ultraman. No problems here. <laughs> don't get me wrong. It's not a problem. It's not an issue. But in a Godzilla movie, I just want a little bit more budget. If you guys get what I'm trying to say. I uh -huh. loved that final fight, though. I really did. One or two things kind of when 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 Kiru jumps, when she makes him jump and he's got his legs crossed and he's that silly shit. Um, but other than that, I thought the fight was really good. I thought it was visual. I thought it made sense, especially when Akane makes Kiru grab Godzilla's snout to, to stop him from, you know, unleashing his uh, atomic breath. And then she, you know, drags him off into the ocean to hit them with absolute zero. But the fight was good. One of the things I was upset at is... Before that fight, before Kiru gets there, they make an effort to show the damage done in Japan. There's fire raging, and it's one. It's again a gorgeous shot. Something that I picked up on today that I'm like, fuck. It's been 14 years since this movie came out, and I'm just like getting this now. Just beautiful trails of fire. I, I say beautiful real loosely. I, I mean, as far as the scenes go. The shot, it's overhead shot. You see Japan, you see the city, you see Tokyo, and it's flames stretching across, you know, this vastness. And you can't even see Godzilla. You don't know where he's at. You just see these flames. And then Kiru comes. None of those flames are there when the fight happens. The, 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 it just seems like it's set to set to set to set in each shot. Godzilla 2000 did it right. When shit blew up, you see the damage in the background. Whether it was a you know a small little detail in the back or not, the damage was there. You never got that from this movie. I was a little bummed out about that. Miniatures aside, were gorgeous, but it's just like I said, it felt like watching an Ultraman show, an Ultraman episode, and you know that's not Godzilla in my book. So, what about you, Jr.? Do you feel the same way I feel, or what? Actually, I never really thought about it until now, and I'm like, holy. Fuck. That does happen in the movie. Wow. That does actually knock that movie down for me now. Well, look, <laughs> I don't want... <laughs> don't hate me. I'm sorry. I just don't. No, I'm not hating you. It was just like one of those things. I was like, wow, they had an opportunity to make it a little bit more spectacular than it really was <laughs> in its own way of with having all the, the city already in flames, already being destroyed. It's like... What else are you going to lose at this point? But, you know, the fire's gone when they do fight. Wow. Damn. Oh, anyways. Um, the final fight, I think, is cool. The CG when they drop Kiyu and he's flying, I thought was actually really well done. It looks good. But when Kiyu slams into Godzilla and he goes flying across the fucking city, oh, that's cringe for me. Every time, dude. Every time I'm just like, go no. No, I, no. I totally agree with you on that one. I, I feel the same way when, when that happens. But it's just, if Godzilla, instead of flying, would have just gotten, like, knocked down and did, like, a boom, boom, like, a two, three, four steps into the floor, that would have looked really well. Like, that would have looked really good and believable instead of just, but again, he, CG. He flies, and it's so wrong, and... After that, the CG shots with God Mechagodzilla jumping and flying and doing all that weird shit, I was like, please stop. Please. Just, you can stop now. I'm not taking away from the fight. The fight's awesome. It's just some of those CG shots and what they wanted to do with him, it was just like, just stop. Please. God, don't go there. You keep going there. Stop going there. I will, I, I will say this. Um because it is the same director. I don't know if it's the same writer. I don't know if the guy directed and wrote both movies. Uh, but that happened in Mega Garris. They did the, the, the goofy Godzilla jump. Oh, we'll, I know. We'll but, get to that. You know. But I think he refined that in this movie. I, I, I mean, <clears throat> Like I said, the only thing I did, the ballerina jump for Kiru, where his legs were like crossed. And looked, <laughs> you know, it just looked like a ballerina <laughs> thing. Uh, but other than outside of that, there was no real goofiness uh, to the fight. But I do agree. 
once once Kiru hits Godzilla when he comes in for that landing, which again, when Kiru is let off of the um the ships that are carrying him and he goes, I love that shot too. I think God that looks good. As bad as the CG was, it's good for the time. Uh, no, it, it, even nowadays to me though, it does look really well. And it, it's one of those things. It's like we gotta drop him midair. We're gonna have to fly his ass in there. Yeah. If they would have like straight run Godzilla, had him just shoot a bunch of missiles like a B two bomber or an A ten warthog, just bomb the shit out of him and then land, and that damages Godzilla. I think it would have been better than him slamming into Godzilla and Godzilla flying across the city. I agree with you. And plus, being the fact that he's a cyborg, his uh, weapon systems should be, you know, fully functioning and aiming directly where they need to go. So the collateral damage wouldn't be much. The lady in the hospital, who they kept showing that nurse. Who was that? Anybody knows who that was, by the way? Because she has to be famous. They kept going back to her. Anybody? She's from Godzilla vs. Megaguirus. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she is. She's the main character in Godzilla vs. Megaguirus. No way. We're going to get to that in two weeks. Absolutely 100% is. And in the beginning of Godzilla x Mechagodzilla, the guy picking up the trash is the main character in Godzilla 2000. That I knew. That I know. That's that's, that's Ando from uh, Mothra. He's in a bunch of old Godzilla movies. Um, I I know that guy. Um, which is cool. But no, she is the, the main character in Godzilla vs. Megaguirus. Dude, look it up. Wow, that's awesome. See, the things I don't pay attention to, but I love. All you right. I didn't even know that either. So let me jump to you now, uh, G73. That final fight scene, man. Your thoughts? Well, see, here's the thing. I'm different. I actually don't mind when Kiru slams into Godzilla because at that point, I think that's just them showing off how fast Kiru is and Mechagodzilla 3 is. And it showed how hard he hit Godzilla. I don't mind that. What I cringe at is when he picks Godzilla up by the tail and starts swinging him around. Okay, wait, wait. Before you go, God- before you go on, real quick, I'm going to let you. I got to take back the, the silly thing I said that wasn't in this movie. They did the tail swing. My bad. Good point, G73. Go ahead. <laughs> And they swing him around, and Godzilla is just stiff as a board, and his legs are, like, not flailing or anything. He's just stiff. And then he throws him across the city. I'm like, that, that cringes me. It's more. It's not as cringy to me as it is when he hits Godzilla and he flies. I, I think that actually could have happened. I don't see that as something silly. I mean, I'm different, though. Um, but what the one thing that I notice also, whenever Godzilla or Mechagodzilla falls or flies himself when he gets hit by Godzilla, his tail curves at the end. And it's just, it's just funny because it's like, that wouldn't happen. And that's like, I notice it in every Godzilla movie now, whenever Godzilla flies or they pick up Godzilla and bring him to the sea, his tail is curved at the end and everything. And it's just, it's just funny to me because it wouldn't have it wouldn't be that way if it was actually real. Well, well, well take, um, take 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 this as an example. Pick up a cat. Pick up a cat. Watch its tail. It I curls think, up. A cat's tail will curl up. That I think not my cats. <laughs> for real, but they just hang down between their legs. My my cats when you pick them up, well the cats that live here when you pick them up, uh, their their tails are loose. They don't they don't curl them or anything. So wait wait, did we just confirm Godzilla's a mutated cat now? No, well <laughs> in the Hesai series he looks like uh, he's feline ish. He's a kitty. He's a cute kitty. Hey, how yeah, about yeah, let's, let's move on for that. Yeah yeah, that go ahead. Yeah, I don't want to talk about cute Godzilla. Damn that shit. G seventy three, keep going. What you were saying, brother? <laughs> Uh, the, the the final fight. I love that fight. I think I think when Godzilla movies do fights like that, that's how long a fight should be. Yes. I think that was the perfect amount of time for a fight. The perfect effort for amount of a fight. Um, I I I enjoyed that fight. I thought it was very well done. I thought it was choreographed really well. Um, I. I like Godzilla and I like Godzilla taking a beating and then I like, you know, Mecha Godzilla taking a beating. I like it being equal. That was a very fun fight. That's a fight I will rent pizza for on Friday. I will, I will order pizza on Friday night, sit down and watch it and and just watch. That's what I used to do all the time is I would watch Mecha Godzilla and order pizza and um, watch it and just go nuts with that fight. 
and I would invite friends over to watch it with me, and that would be my Friday night, just like how it was last night. But last night I had Adalberto's, which is a Mexican restaurant here in Sacramento, which is very amazing, by the way. Um, but anyways, um, I, lo- I just love that fight. Um, and I love the ending where the uh, absolute zero goes off, turns into like this like crystallized frozen water a uh, splash. I thought that was very beautiful. And then God, then it breaks and Godzilla pops out of it and he has this big old hole in his chest. I thought that was fucking cool. Yeah. Um, but when Mecha Godzilla pops out of the ocean again, they kind of make him pop out with the prop too much. And you see his knees go above the water. <laughs> and I, I just, well, excuse you, Godzilla. Um, I, I I just don't I, I thought that was kind of silly, but I love that fight. I, at the end of that shot, that part was really beautifully done, and this movie just had great visuals of Godzilla, and I loved it. Uh, it made me fall in love with the design of of uh, Kiru Goji. Um, I I love that they implemented you know the features that they did, and um, uh, the. The fight was just cool. I just, I just loved it. I thought it was very amusing. Got amusing, yeah, because he tells with them. Lindsay, the final fight. Your thoughts? Well, I'm going to disagree with all of you because oh, since I am no. an Ultraman fan, I totally accepted that fight as if it's a homage to the Showa fights in Ultraman. Like, and I'm not talking about just Ultraman. I mean, like the entire Ultra series because I'm, I'm used to seeing you know, those types of props used in, like, you know, a stiff board of Ultraman or Ultraman, uh, Ultraman Leo, just throwing him around, like, doing this. But, um, I don't know. I totally welcome that. Uh, the fight itself, fantastic. I agree with the ballerina feat. That looked odd, and I, every time I watch it, I just can't help but laugh because it looks so stupid, but I'm, like, I understand (laughs) where they were going. Um, I do agree with Chase. Uh, the ending shot where they fall into the ocean, the splash, and the absolute zero, like, freezes the splash water and it creates, like, a swirling, you know, thing in the air. That was cool. Yeah. And then uh, I think I think I just noticed this a couple, uh, like, when I saw it for, I think, the third time when I was a kid. But I really noticed how much damage the absolute zero did to Godzilla. Like, the hole in his chest is it's deep. And I'm like... Damn, that's probably the most damaged I've ever seen Godzilla. So, Godzilla's and the way he just away. turns off and walks yeah. away, and he, Kyu's watching him, and uh, uh, Akane is just standing on Kyu's shoulders. That was great. There's a grunt. I love that. There's a grunt from Godzilla in that scene too. When he's walking, he's like, Ugh. he's like, he's like, that's just like, yeah, uh, he's, just, he's done. He's like, I'm out of here. Okay, <laughs> I'll take he's a break. Like, oh. <laughs> he's, like, <laughs> he's like, all right. <laughs> he, he, he realized he's like I'm sorry, Dad. I'm sorry. I'm I'm out. I'm going home. You got me. But uh, good point. Anything else you want to say? Um, I don't know. It's, I I just I love that entire scene again. Like I said, I love the ragdoll throwing. You know, it it's just it hits home for me because of Ultraman stuff. And then uh, the shot again where they drop Kiyu and the moon's behind him and he's just free falling. That was cool. I always love that it scene. Remind me of Ninja, Ninja Godzilla, <laughs> or a Ninja <laughs> Godzilla. <laughs> and which reminds me too, it does remind me of Ultraman as well because they do a lot of shots of that where, like, you know, he uh, a bunch of them transform and they they do that same shot sometimes, and it just it hits home for me. I love it. All right, greatest yeah. the greatest moon scene in a kaiju movie, Gamera three. Bam. Oh yes, Iris yes. in the moon. That's the best one ever done to this day. Well, and, and, and a close second for me, Final Wait. Wars Rodan. That's a close second, very close. You mean you mean your favorite moon scene isn't in Attack of Legion when they're at the fucking spa and the dude's ass naked getting into it <laughs> and you see his ass. <laughs> No, 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 no. no. If, if, if we're going by, oh, better. I'm sorry. If, if we're going by that logic, better. If we're going by that logic in moon scenes, okay, 
Yuki, <laughs> Yuki and Space Godzilla. Okay, that's that's the scene right yeah. there. <laughs> that's the scene right there. Well, their listen. faces. <laughs> well, I love listen. Their faces. We uh, oh we pretty much we pretty much knocked this one out the park. I gotta be honest, man. I really, I I enjoyed the shit out of this podcast. The way I enjoyed the shit out of that movie today, it's unbelievable. We had a small panel, we kicked ass, and uh, man, massive props to you guys, man. Seriously, you know what me? He's gonna ask us trivia now. It's time. <laughs> it is no, time. Don't for... start with me. No, don't. I swear to God, if you do. <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is that time in the podcast where we are going to talk some trivia. We're going to ask the trivia questions. I will. And see if my panel of three can get the correct answer. And since we're talking about a Mecha Godzilla movie, why not trivia? A Mecha Godzilla movie. So, that being said, I've got two questions lined up for you guys, okay? I don't know if you guys know your shit. I'm sure you do. I'm sure somebody might get it, but he's not on the panel today. Uh, so, the questions, both of them, come from Terra of Mecha Godzilla. You oh, guys yeah. ready? Oh, yeah. You guys ready? We'll start with this yes. one. We'll start with this one. This this one should be easy. They both should be easy. I'm sure both of you will get this. Okay, but... <clears throat> G73. What? Is the name of the scientist and daughter who founded uh, who founded Titanosaurus? Uh, I know the daughter's name is Katsura. Um, the scientist's name, oh geez, I it's on the tip of my tongue too, but I can't. Mm. Five, four, three. Two, you're gonna, yeah, you're one. gonna have to skip. I only know the daughter's name, but I, I know the name if someone said it. All right, I was gonna get my Terror Mecha Godzilla DVD and read the back of it, but Jay I'm up. not gonna do that. Name yeah. the scientist and his daughter who found Titanosaurus. Uh, um, well, I know Katira. God damn it. Uh, even if I try to cheat right now, I don't think I have the time. <laughs> uh, no, I, dude, I only know Catcher. I cannot remember five, his name. Four, and that is one of my favorite Godzilla movies. No. I'm sorry. We don't give points for half the answer. Lindsay! Yes. Name the scientist and daughter who founded Titanosaurus. I believe it was Dr. Shinzo and Katsura. Got to be honest with you. I thought you guys would know it. It is Dr. Mafoni. Oh, my God. And Katsura. Katsura was correct, but I don't give point God five. God damn it. No, I... No. Wow. That was actually my second question. I thought that one was going to be, you know, the easier one, but I guess not. Nah, it was rather difficult. Okay. Second question. You guys ready? In Terra of Mechagodzilla, what agency... Does Jiro Murakoshi work for? Lindsay. Mm. Oh, no. Oh, wow. I, I'm passing. JR, Terra Mecha Godzilla, what agency does Jiro Murakoshi work for? Um... Uh, Interpol. G73. In Terra of Mecha Godzilla, what agency does Yiro Morikoshi work for? And see, he even he even says it in one scene. Uh, but I'm gonna go with Interpol. The correct answer is Interpol. Holy shit! G73 and then JR, they get the points. Lindsay, today you stunk it up. I might give you five. 0.5 points just for the cancer shh, between me and you. Shh. <laughs> Don't tell the other guys. Don't tell them. <laughs> uh, oh, I, man. I should have known that. I swear to God. Well, uh, JR and, and G73, they get the points for today. I'm sure, again, my wild horse would have gotten that. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure he might have. But, again, listen, 
This the trivia stuff. I don't know where this is going. I'm just having fun with it. I'm testing y'all knowledge. And I want to say thank you all for being here with me today. This was, again, a very fun podcast. So, Lindsay, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Had a good time. Absolutely. JR, thank you for joining me today. Yo. Exactly. Starts it the way he finishes. Ends it the way he started. Whatever. G73, <laughs> thank you for joining me today. This was probably one of my favorite podcasts we've done. This was a fun one. This was definitely a fun one. And you know what? They say it always is better when you go in with low expectations. I went into this podcast with a little bit of a low expectations only because I didn't think this was going to be that podcast. This turned out with myself and three panel members to be one of the better podcasts we have done in our 35, I think 36 podcast. This is one of my favorites. So thank you guys. Massive props. And I want to thank all you guys out there for listening to us. I am G1. This is the Godzilla Blog Party. Peace.